Hey, y'all. This week's episode of The Read is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. Win or lose, every Little League team still ends up at McDonald's after the game, and you can always depend on that trusty McDonald's Wi-Fi when you need it. Everybody's been to a McDonald's birthday party at some point in their life, and we all know it's the pit stop destination you can absolutely rely on during road trips. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. I'm loving it. All right, let's start the show. Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, non-binary uh, royalty, to the podcast. I'm Kendrick Lamar's day in Vegas outfit. <laughs> and I am Althea Gibson. This is The Read. Thanks for coming back. It is indeed. It's a show where we read and we watch and we listen and sometimes we learn. And this week, we're okay. going to start like every week with some black excellence. And this week, I was chosen to discuss something that brought me joy and smiles um, via a black excellence story on TikTok. And it comes by way of a mom named Victoria, and her TikTok is Victoria Pretty Much. Victoria pretty much. Now, some of y'all may have heard about this story. You may already know where I'm going with this um, because this TikTok post has currently 2.4 million views. Um, Victoria went to TikTok to tell the story about how how after, (laughs) I'm sorry, how after. I think she said how many months? Seven? She's after months. Okay. Of having to, I guess, deal with, uh, you know, the legalese and consequences of some of her child's actions. She was now, is now in the clear to discuss something that took place with her 11-year-old in the school that he attends. Um, Oh, I did see this. (laughs) Okay, I do know what you mean. Victoria was pulled down to the uh, (laughs) down to the school where her son Elijah attends fifth grade. They said he's not in danger, but he is in trouble. And she said when uh, she got there, he was you know very visibly upset. And she said that the motherfucking district attorney's office, the superintendent, the principal, faux cops. And three IT technicians <laughs> were waiting there. So at Girl. this point, she's like, well, what's going on? And again, if you haven't seen this, I will let Victoria tell the story. You can go to her TikTok for the rest. Long story short, basically, she was made aware that her 11-year-old son um, was controlling the school's internet and had been doing so for three months And Mm. essentially what that entailed was him hacking into the system somehow using one of the students' computers and just shutting the whole damn internet off whenever he didn't (laughs) want to go to school or be in class. Because that prevented teachers from communicating with one another, you know, doing their damn job overall. And so they were, you know, led to, they had no choice in, in most cases but to cancel classes. And let the kids go home. And I believe she said that they were also doing like, like I think in person maybe every other week and then virtual one week, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's like a hybrid thing. Yeah. So this tech genius <laughs> was an like icon, an icon, a living legend. 13? 11. Wow. 11 oh, right. years old. Not even 13. 11. <laughs> A fifth grade child was like, you know what? I slept with dolls at age (laughs) eleven, and this nigga is hacking into main. I'm poor. (laughs) I'm smarter than they are. Um, Oh man, I want to go home, and I'm gonna. And so, (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> shutting their shit down. And she said that they literally, it took them like months literally to figure yeah. out what was going <laughs> on. And it like finally, they she said National Guard came down to the school. With Insanity. <laughs> eventually they had to like narrow it down computer by computer and found out that it was him. So right. school's pissed, principal's pissed, everybody's pissed. And um, they had to, you know, fight to make sure that he wouldn't have gotten charges pressed against him and have this on his criminal <sighs> record and things like that, which luckily he did not, although he is uh, black. So, right. It was a real possibility, yeah. Even at 11. Mm -hmm. You never know. They will give your baby federal charges. What he did have to do, according to mom, uh, is write her an apology, work. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Write her an apology. (laughs) Write her an apology. Mommy, I am so sorry. (laughs) Um, Also, she said he had to do some, like, a paper on, like, what he should have done, what he shouldn't have done, the contrast or something like that. Um, Then he had to build something in Minecraft, a soccer field or something. He had to build his own video game, which she said he did in two hours, built a basketball (laughs) video game, which is like, what? What? Um, oh, and then community service. She said he did something with at the church with his grandma because, of course, again, we're talking about black people. Um, <laughs> he probably had to help serve fish plates or something. For, <laughs> of course. For the fundraiser. He backed that with them gloves on and a hairnet. Absolutely. <laughs> Putting people's beans in that little styrofoam container. You know they got one of them steam clean. They just got a Stanley steamer. One of them things. <laughs> Push that around there, baby. <laughs> They put that little nigga to work. You know what? This child, I mean, I get it. You're That's embarrassed. But I just thought, <laughs> what a little savant. Like, what a little genius you have. Clearly a genius. She did, like, a follow-up video with him in the car where she answered some of y'all's ghetto-ass questions. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> it was very cute. He was in the video with her. Um, and, yeah, he's... Very clearly a good kid who was just like made. She said herself, um, I knew he was smart. Does he make the best choices all the time? No. But no. We were working on that. And he's a very good child. Overall, he is a good boy. And I imagine that he's going to, you know, be a black tech genius and a mm-hmm. billionaire at some point And maybe invent the first Iron Man real life. Iron Man operatable suit. That might already be a thing. I don't know. I mean, it might. I also don't know, but or care. I love that his his I'm punishment right. his punishments were all bullshit. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> write me an apology and a letter and go help your Mima down to the church. Although she <laughs> said the school, like when they didn't press charges, she said that the school was not happy about that. Which to me was like, <laughs> of course they were. Like, fuck y'all. Fuck y'all. Like, you you got to pull him out not, of that school. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Teachers aside, and honestly, I'm sure a lot of them teachers are like, well, girl, I can't hit you. You can't hit me. I don't know what, what what's on the syllabus. Couldn't tell you. So are right. we going um to go and get appetizers and, and frozen marg? Or what? what's the scene? Listen, seat? yeah. <laughs> Let's hit Applebee's during the lunch because we ain't got to come back up here. But I mean, in on The internet is gone. <laughs> Looking at the evidence here, you really mad that this baby didn't get federal charges pressed against him? Why? Of course not. No, I adore it. I love that his punishment was build mama that a you video feel bad. game, apologize to your mama, and go clean up the church. Build a video game is not even a punishment. I don't hear the problem. <laughs> it sounds like something he want to do. It sounds right. Like it sounds like job done. training. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I saw that video and I just thought I get the embarrassment and I understand if anything, not embarrassed, but I would be so pissed because now I really I'm going to have to spend a lot of money to make sure that you don't get an undue amount of trouble because you are a little black boy. And if you were white, NASA would have called. Bitch. And that is on 
Parade. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you something. If this, that's the same shit I said, bitch. If this yeah. was a little white boy, they would have been Child. like, oh, you scamp. Let's go and tour <laughs> Tesla. Here's Elon right. Musk and five scholarships. Yeah, Girl, an apprenticeship at Google or some shit. Mark Zuckerberg would have been like, we have a job for you right just come right on over so i mean i do get that but i like that she said you know sometimes he makes poor choices because he's 11 and because he's supposed he's to in the fifth grade he's literally growing up and yeah <laughs> kids are supposed to mess up this is more funny than anything else yeah it ain't like he hacked into something and started killing niggas like right that's what i'm saying like he she shut even the internet said, down she even <laughs> said in the original tiktok video she was like at, at one point i thought that well, hell, maybe he broke into the safe and brought the pow pow to school <laughs> like right she was like police I didn't and know, the national guard i'm thinking it's a shooting i didn't i don't think he knows the code sure. maybe he found out the code <laughs> with the safe and i didn't know well, i thought he she said the pow pow it literally took me at least one <laughs> second to realize she was talking about her gun. Right. I was like, bitch, not the pow pow. Oh, yeah. You might want to change the code on that safe, though. Right, just in case. It. That's what I'm saying. Or can mama. hack into it. That's Maybe the T, exactly. <laughs> he could have been brought the pow pow down to the school, mama. He's not interested. If he could shut down the whole day. De- mama, they didn't even just go to his school. <laughs> they went to other schools in the yeah. district. Yeah, because they could not. This little boy is, that's what I'm saying. If that young man could do that, he is not child. pressed about your safe sister. No. He don't want nothing mm-hmm. in there. He said, guess what? I'm all done with Zoom. I'm all done with Kabam or Kabloom, whatever it is that them teach that website with the trivia questions. He is all done with all of that shit. He's not submitting shit else and don't ask. He's, He's going on. own the next TikTok or whatever TikTok is of his generation. Right. Shout out to that Young man, boy. shout out the fuck out to you. I don't care what none of the white people say. No, yeah, you were mischievous. You were. You were mischievous. Shouldn't this have done mischievous. that. mischievous. And you probably really stressed mm. out some grownups. Yeah. You did. Those grownups were stressed. So they sent a lot of emails. <laughs> mm. When they could. When tiss, you got the internet tiss. back on. <laughs> Alleged. You're a fucking rock star. Are you kidding me? Right. <laughs> All right. So let's move on into this uh, pop culture segment. That's called... Um, Mm-hmm. Eat me out on the bearded body. Oh my god. Lick me right on the crack of my ass. Swing, swing. Oh. Swing that dick around my neck. Bust on my face long as you cut all my checks. Whoa, fuck me. Hey, right in the ass on tonight. (laughs) Me. Take it away. Out on the kitchen floor. Lift me overhead. Strike up a J and let us fuck the pain away. And the spark. I don't remember how it goes. I deeply cannot stand you. You did that so whole. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> yeah, I was like, where is this going? What is it? You are the actual worst. You are. <laughs> I never forgot how Filthy. it goes. I just listened to it like two days ago. That you mostly had it. One of these. Da- First of all, um, shout out to Six Pence on the Richer. If you sue me, I get it. Um... <laughs> Uh, and also, what do white people be talk about? That is such a classic white song, people. and like, <laughs> oh yeah, what the fuck is bearded barley? Is that what they said? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it sounds like. Bearded barley. <laughs> Let me go <laughs> under the milky twilight. Yeah, no, that, that makes I a don't. little bit more sense. Like yeah. twilight. Oh, I guess, out of the like the moon. it does say bearded barley. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Well, I know what barley is, but what the fuck is bearded barley? Maybe it's like, maybe it's like a heavily pubed vagina. Well, that is what Urban Dictionary says. <gasps> oh my gosh, I am so smart. Because like bearded is like the pubes and then barley because it smells of wheat. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> 
No, <laughs> I don't know. no it does not. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, some. Glutinous. No, it should not be no glutinous ass well, pussy. Well, you never know. I, I mean, the part, like certain, no. certain chemistries, maybe. I don't know. I have, I mean, truly, I don't know what a beerly. No. I have no but idea this what is that just, means. But white people being it. real romantic about a kiss. Actually, I only like that song because of the word spirited barley. Because what is that? It just sounds. Anyways, so let's start this week with um, wow. Will Smith has a new book out. It's called it's Will. It's going to be in my Google history forever. Okay. Um, <laughs> Bearded Barley. It's going to be. <laughs> Google is always going to know that I looked that up <laughs> and that I saw that shit I saw on Oh, come on. Of all the things you've Googled, I feel like... Google I mean, you're bar. you're not wrong, but that just that hit different. You can't be the <laughs> only like, people who want to know what the fuck she was talking about. No, I mean, the first result is saying bearded barley is probably just a, a mistakenly transcribed lyric, and that's probably not the real lyric, so... Mm. We're definitely not the only ones <laughs> who were like, what the Look up the fuck? lyrics first. I listened to the song and that's what I thought she said. So. Well, mm. just saying. Maybe a lot, You're right. A lot of other people have Googled it as well. But yes, Will Smith put out a book. I did hear about that. It's called Will. Mm-hmm. It has a cute cover. It does. It's all um, colorful and Bel Air-esque. Um, so it's a memoir. And it's really hard for me not to say of the geisha after that. <laughs> because that's, I guess, how I'm proud of you. Today with my brain. <laughs> proud of you. Um, but yeah, this is the book that's been, you know, that publishing team is probably over there eating Nathan's every day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Playing right. Uno and and just screaming in delight. Because wow, was that book's been like in terms of marketing and press? It is selling itself. It is everywhere. I've never seen so many Will Smith interviews. I've never seen so many Will Smith quotes. It's almost like the Adele machine. (laughs) The way when Adele get ready to do something and the the entire industry comes together to support it, it feels a lot like that. I love the Adele machine though because Adele is usually a lot more quiet in between. The work. Right. And so she's That's like true. in her Adele she be uh, layer. Home. And then when it's out, it's like boom, triple A blockbuster budget <laughs> right. things. And then she, you know, does the album until she's done tour, whatever, whatever. And then we see her again when we see her. Or like a Jasmine Sullivan. But of course, yeah. they don't give her as much budget because I don't black. And so, but right. Will Smith is like, you know, guy at Westbrook and he even has, um, the King Richard film uh, that he's promote, promoting as well right now. Uh, so he's got things he's doing, as always, because Will Smith is never not working and neither is anybody over there in that damn house, to be honest with you. <laughs> right. Everybody is employed and working. Everybody constantly. has a job. Everybody has a job. Mm-hmm. Um, good for him. It's not, I mean, I didn't buy it. I haven't read it, but good for him. I ordered it. It'll be here Saturday. Um, well, among some of the things that he's made headlines for in regards to this book, once again, the discussion of Tupac and how he was jealous of Tupac because him and Jada were in love and they grew up together and uh, Tupac was a gangster nigga and he was, quote unquote, a soft uh, rapper from Philly. Uh, And I'm just like, I guess throw it in there. Now's the time in terms of, you know, your book or whatever. But like, do we have to, <laughs> you know? I was going to say, we've heard this before, have we not? So, uh, many times. I have. I have. Right. Well, so not sure why we're going down that road again, but Will is probably going down all kind of roads again. Oh, He's honey. Visiting a lot of shit. So. That's the tip of the iceberg. He talks about, um, his bout with suicidal thoughts, the time that he wanted to kill mm-hmm. his dad, more Jada oh, yeah. drama, um, and all kinds of fun stuff in between. Um, I'm just say that I'm not a big fan of people giving Will Smith shit over things his wife be talking about. 
And I'm not a big Me-me. fan of... <laughs> because, like... He's... Be- the- both of them have become, like, a meme based on, uh, you know, confession. These are my confessions. Based on confessions via re- the red table the red table okay yes um and then now this and it's like yeah it's fun whatever but this whole even this whole tupac thing to me just sounds like regular old nigga insecurities sounds like a whole lot of y'all to me i mean yes at least this actually. nigga's in a place where he can talk about it write about it admit and move on from it so it sounds like he's a few clicks ahead of some of y'all i'm just saying i'm making like observations mm-hmm. well i mean he is like 50 so he should be a few clicks ahead of some of y'all but yeah that's i mean some of y'all motherfuckers are 45 <laughs> some of y'all never get there right that is true so but shout out to therapy i'm sure he talks about his um experiences with all that but I don't know. I guess I haven't seen too many people blaming Will or like. It's not blaming. It's that. much more clowning Jada. But it's mm-hmm. like. It's like ricocheted collateral damage. It's it's just mm. ma- Internet mess and drama. And I'm yeah. just like, I guess I get it. But also I didn't whatever the latest uh, Jada confession was I did not I haven't seen any red table stuff I do want to watch the psychedelics episode I saw clips about an episode about psychedelics I haven't partaken Mm. but Gam was talking about how she might want to get into ayahuasca or she (laughs) wants to try ayahuasca or some shit which I'm I don't know that I want to do any of that I know Willow was like uh, I don't know well Willow wasn't there (laughs) Willow was busy on tour being uh, an alternative rock superstar as well as um, international musician and uh, touring badass and so her brother um, the less famous Mm, (laughs) Jaden okay Jaden filled in for it, which was fun. But anyways, I only saw clips of it and I was like, oh, it sounds like something interesting as someone who is myself interested in how psychedelics work. Um, But yeah, whatever the latest shit is that y'all were memeing about, I didn't um, see what that is about. But y'all made it sound like Mm. Jada said that she fucked Dwayne Martin and Jazzy Jeff at (laughs) Janet Huber's house. (laughs) Please. I don't know what's going on over there, but I'm just like, yeah. Oh, poor, and I'm not poor classics. Like I, I enjoy Red Table Talk when I watch it. I don't think I've ever just outright hated an episode, but I also don't watch it regularly. And I'm not super attached to Will and Jada, like as a couple. I don't have no celebrities that I look at and think, man, I would love their life or I would love their relationship. So I don't have know, any them going I through feel shit. About either. Yeah, them going through shit and having marital ups and downs and all that and regrets and everything else. Like them niggas have been together for a long time. So I suspect both of them have a lot of stories. And of course they're gonna say whatever needs to be said in order to get y'all talking and get the sales up for this book. Like one thing they not is stupid. So yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not surprised that a bunch of stuff that seems to be controversial came out within a couple of weeks of this, because why wouldn't it? That's the whole point. People are still speaking to Phaedra Parks about things. Um, well, I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> she cursed me. <laughs> she spoke to HollywoodLife.com. Because uh, apparently she's on some new shit that Andy Cohen is at fault for. Um, that's not the Royal Housewives. But the Hollywood Life asked her if she would return to the Housewives. Because what else do you ask a housewife? <laughs> or somebody who used to be one, right? Are you ever coming back? You either and... ask them about something that happened on the Housewives or you ask them if they're going back to Housewives. Has she ever talked about the lies? Why would she? Like, I mean, I don't know, but I just was curious if she had ever, like, talked off camera or off of Housewives, I should say, about all that drama that led to her getting kicked off of it in the first place. Like, did she ever apologize to Candy for starting that rumor or? Hmm. 
I'm going to look it up. When asked if she would return, Phaedra said, I've evolved. And so I love that the fans want me back, but my children are at, children are at an age. The Housewives an awesome platform. But it comes with its issues. And so to be a great parent and to be a responsible parent, I think that it would not be a responsible decision. It does come with its issues, like having cast a few <laughs> other members of cast of attempted rape and then... Right. Uh, other highly inappropriate behavior that really didn't need to be done. I mean, this is a point about the kids. And I remember Aiden being like the single most adorable little person I had ever laid eyes on and yeah, you know, they probably are at an age where kids at school watch it or people would be talking about it. So that is true. But also, Phaedra, you open yourself up to a whole lot of criticism that I'm sure you don't want to deal with every time you let Andy Cohen hit roll on them cameras. So I just doubt that the kids are the only reason you're not doing it. I'm actually not even sure if she would be welcome back. Because I don't think well, Candy is willing to type with her. Or, yeah, I don't think I don't think Candy is willing to shoot with her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but who the fuck cares? Like, it's you th- honestly think that any of them white people over there would be be above saying, "Well, bye, girl." <laughs> like, it's really it. It's not a Candy thing or a loyalty thing. It's a numbers thing. And if the numbers say, "Hey, adding Phaedra Parks into the mix of whatever the chemistry is going to be supposed to be giving this season." is going to do this to the numbers, that's what the fuck they're going to do. And I assure you that don't nobody give a fuck about whatever beer-battered, fried shit Candy got going on uh, down over at OLG. And I say that as someone who does not mind Candy or Burris, I think that her kids are beautiful or whatever. But, girl, I promise you I don't give a fuck about that fried catfish or grits or whatever the fuck she got <laughs> cooking on over there or like now fajitas or whatever like this. Now she do Asian fusion, probably, you know, Candy Burris pho. What? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, true, but with Andy Portia leaving the show, noodles. then all of the drama that fans want to see or whatever would be based off her interactions with Candy. So if Candy's not there, then it's like she's here to argue with who about what? I mean, I don't know. She could also just lie as she does. Here's the thing. Great. This means literally nothing to me. I know a lot of y'all live for uh, Miss Phaedra. And you have been hoping for a longest time How? that she would come back to the show. Well, you know, Phaedra clearly has gay friends that have written, like, really good, um, compelling reads for her and moments for her and her confessionals and in her interviews and reunions. And some people, mostly gays, have found entertainment <laughs> in that. And so they're like, oh, yes, I love her. She reminds me of myself also a shady queen from church and so bring her back honey uh personally i, mean, I could hmm. never see phaedra parks ever again in my life and it would be too soon so yeah it would be just fine i don't i mean i get that phaedra has been entertaining on the show especially when she would make fun of somebody for being stupid or something like that i'm not gonna say she never made me laugh but mm. i don't know how you look at her actions and be like yeah me using this gif of her outweighs the shit like the actual real life things that she's done i don't know how y'all get there but that's how these girls end up being tyrants anyway that's literally how they get to that place because i don't trust people... her because her top lip don't want to let me see her top row teeth <laughs> y'all, just... <laughs> y'all just never have standards and you let the girls get away with anything and support them regardless so but good i'm glad she's not coming back i guess i mean i don't even be watching uh, Housewives of Atlanta like that anyway. I like Potomac and I like Beverly Hills. Mm, and the other girls I don't really watch, so. Did the um Queen Radio in, uh, reunion happen yet? Uh, not that I know of. The Potomac, the P- Potomac sponsored by Queen Radio reunion? Not that I know of, although I am not caught up on the reunion, so I don't know if it... But I think if it happened, I would have seen screenshots or clips of it uh by now so True. no not yet but you know still waiting with bated breath nikki might change her mind after you know all the shit that she and her husband are currently going through she might decide that she's not doing tv but we'll see so stephen jordan filed from divorce apparently from his wife faith evans 
who he's been married to for three years? Has it been that damn long already? Wow. I guess so. Well, irreconcilable differences is what he's telling the judge. And honestly, I would expect if anybody um, was filing for a divorce and a marriage with Stevie J, it would be whoever is married to Stevie J. <laughs> um, apparently, I found out today that Stevie had uh, accused Faith of uh, being unfaithful. And then like a day later, claimed his page was hacked. Uh um okay <laughs> are we supposed to believe stevie j was faithful Ciao. are we really supposed to do that after seeing the way that man behaved on tv for all them years i don't think so why would you anyway we've crossed this but bridge. i mean i never i did not want faith to marry this man in the first place so <laughs> glad to hear it whatever floats your clit faith <laughs> gross <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was like one day, Hey, um, uh, tell the publicist or whatever down on, um, in Bucket to call Shay room, tell them I'm getting a divorce, whatever. And then just a few days ago, there were photos via Faith Evans page of this nigga doing literal cartwheels on the beach in Malibu. And uh, her also attempting cartwheels on the beach in Malibu. Uh, And then she posted uh, one of these stale quote thingies on her page. It says, did you know there are three places you can stay for free? In your lane, out of my business, (laughs) and over there. Okay. With the caption right there. Now, here's the thing, Faith. That's what I was doing. All three of these things. (laughs) Right. Like, was that for us? Are you telling us to stay out your business? Because, I mean, I wasn't, I really wasn't looking for y'all at all. This Stevie J filing for divorce, like, leaving you, that popped up on my Instagram. I wasn't searching for it, though. I promise you that. That just happened to me. I mean, again, while I think that, uh, what would we call it? You, folks who frequent the blog comments and the drama mm-hmm. and stuff, that, a lot of times things go too far. People do the most, saying crazy shit, doing crazy shit, da 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 da. But then a lot of the times you have to remember that niggas are just bored at work or bored at home. Or whatever, just, you know, scrolling by habit and engaging because that's just something that they do. And they're going to forget about this by tomorrow unless you keep talking mm-hmm. about this shit, which is usually what y'all do. And and then they will go and talk about something the fuck else. So it's not even that we're super invested in whatever the fuck is going on in your marriage or lack thereof or almost divorce or whatever the fuck. It's that mm-hmm. you made it public. So it was talked about. Because you're celebrities. Yep. And that's how that happens. (laughs) You know? Yeah. I Like, you always have the option of just not saying nothing and leaving us out of it entirely. Because like you said, the internet has a short attention span and they will move on to something else. And you're also not the first ones to file for divorce and get back together and then do that over and over. Like... The girls do that all the time. How many times has Cardi claimed she was going to leave Offset? Like, you didn't, you could have just posted your beach we pictures or not. Much and, more of that to come. And would have been just right. Like, it would have been just fine. I get that people are irritating, but that is the beauty in logging off. You don't actually have to be exposed to them niggas and their opinions ever. You can always just log off. Rico Nasty almost had to beat somebody's ass in Portland, Oregon during a show on uh, a stop of Playboy Cardi's King Vamp tour, where she's one of the um, opening acts. Now, I knew that she was on the road. I didn't know who she was on the road with because I completely forgot that Playboy Cardi was a person. Uh, and so, uh, that is happening. 
But apparently during this stop in Portland, someone threw a bottle at Rico while she was performing. Oh, hell no. What? So she took the opportunity there to stop the music. Yeah. Um, and call out to the crowd to assess who the bottle chucking culprit was. Um, no word on whether she got uh, exact confirmation on who it was, but we did get video evidence of her leaping from the stage and rushing the crowd before it seems Ooh, like she wee. was stopped Damn. by security. <laughs> um, now, this came uh, about a week after Rico tweeted the following, anti-black-ass crowd, weak-ass little boys with blonde pubes. Ugh, get me out of here. Gross. <laughs> what a mood. Because <laughs> a real bitch getting paid regardless, keep playing dick weeds. And um, some little you know, mumble rap stand child said, we're not anti-black. We just want to see Cardi and Ken Carson more than you. The other people on the tour to which Rico responded, those niggas would spit on you IRL. It's pathetic. Now I bring this up simply to say that, um, I would like to send out positive vibes to Rico nasty. And, um, once again, uh, remind people that, a lot of these like younger rap crowds are filled with incredibly audacious and unruly uh, white kids that mm, have kind right. of just the thrust themselves into what they would call the culture and feel like they can do and say whatever the fuck they want to, mm-hmm. especially when it is directed towards women. I would follow that right. up by saying that Rico Nasty has more talent in her eyeliner than Playboy Cardi does. I won't say the same about Ken Carson because I don't know who that is. Um, <laughs> that's not shade. I can't. I, I don't either. <laughs> so I feel you. Um, but I think it's ridiculous that you motherfuckers don't know how to act. And if you like, if you are so pressed that you want to see Cardi instead of his opening act or whoever is coming out before him, then do what everybody the fuck else does and go and get drunk somewhere, smoke a blunt, right. do something the fuck else in the meantime until your fave comes out. You don't harass people, you don't heckle people, and you certainly don't attempt to assault them or throw nothing at them, bitch. And she should have actually cracked your shit, but I'm glad that she didn't because you're not worth a fucking case. Rico, love to you. You're awesome. You're unique. Get through this tour, get your coins, bitch, and tell all these motherfuckers that they can suck your ass crack on the way out. Next. Lil Nas okay. X is apparently going to be on Mari. Oh, yeah. I love this little promo. <laughs> this kid is like. So there's like a musical department. And then there's a trolling department. And I don't know who, like, is working harder, to be honest with you. Both very clearly invested in the advancement uh, and successes of Montero. But, man, does the trolling team work hard. So, apparently, Lil Nas X is going to be on Maury. Like, on Maury. Like, really on Maury. Um, Which, I didn't know that Maury still came on. I mean, he is going to be on Maury, but he's not going to be on, like, broadcast Maury. This is going to be, like, an internet-only thing. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I wish it was, actually. Like, I feel like... You know what? Maybe I mean, I'm not surprised, but I guess... Yeah. 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 But this is is genius. Like, the the teaser they put out was just... I I stand. This boy finds new ways to get under y'all skin, and I love everything about it. So he's going to be on there with some story about you know, his boyfriend who is named Jai and is the same love interest that he, that you can find in his That's What I Want video where I believe they go at it in like a football locker room shower or something. Mm-hmm. So it's the same young light skinned man, and then it's like, oh my goodness, who is this girl? He got pregnant, this child, and you know all of the typical Mari theatrics. So I don't know what this is exactly for. It feels like it's probably going to lead into a visual for whatever his next single is. Um, but 
while y'all hating, a lot of y'all need to just go ahead and take a few notes. This is what's called effort. This is what's called thinking. And some of it goes over my head. Some of it I think is awesome and hilarious. Some of it I sincerely don't get because I'm probably just because I'm probably old and ornery, ornery, crotchety. Um, you know, my feet hurt. And yeah, so generally sour mood. Yeah. I feel you. Yep. You know, but it's like, hey, it's better than wearing yet another fucking Fruit of the Loom tank top with a whole bunch of bust down jewelry and some fucking, you know what I'm saying, Burberry glasses and then just going out there and belching for the hundredth time. <laughs> right, which is what the rest of y'all are doing. This is at least creative. It's at least fun. And I don't think so. What I noticed in the teaser was that the boyfriend's baby mama or wife or whatever is white and I do not think that that was you know just a coincidence I believe that was done uh, deliberately but I'm sitting Why? here trying to think of um, because of the thing that XD always says about uh, the nope white. I'm good nope <laughs> it's fine <laughs> I was about to explain his know. theory <laughs> <laughs> that nigga has a whole theory about I know exactly where this is going <laughs> just go ahead and say it he has a whole theory about um, niggas who are not ready to admit their sexuality and the uh, white girlfriend pipeline mm-hmm. and the direction in which that flows yeah. so <laughs> I'll lead y'all to draw your own conclusions about that so that's just, just that's the first him. thing I thought of Mm. When I saw that clip, right. Um, but now that you said it might be promo for the next single, I'm trying to think about what that could possibly be. Because I've been mm. listening to his album a lot over the past week. Um, damn. I don't know. But scoop. I don't know maybe dead right now. Ooh, I really think uh, <laughs> I almost called her fucking Ashley Cat. I really think Doja <laughs> Cat is going to. I, I had to sit here and think about what that girl's name is. I think Doja's gonna be in that video, and that video is going to be it's sexy be. as fuck. Yeah, yeah. That it's, oh god, that is gonna be so good. That kid is so talented. I mean, they're when I said that kid, I was talking about Doja this time, but they're both very talented. Yeah. Did you see the uh, GQ Man of the Year cover? Mm-hmm. Yes. Again, I saw the GQ Man of the Year spread of Lil Night. Right. Like several photos. Um. Yeah, I love that kid. Him in this right. dress, yes. Just everything he has going on, I I love and support it. Yay! Also, I saw the video for what we're talking about gay rappers. Um, have you seen Kid Ken's video with Saucy Santana? I have not. It is like this. They slid. I love. I don't like. I like. Wait a minute. You it's mean that- so fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay no i have not seen this <laughs> first of all it kind of sounds like a song that i would have like made up for a hot tops or something <laughs> because it's so graph, it's so vulgar right <laughs> like, okay first of all i love seeing kid ken and saucy santana doing a song together and a video together but it's just cute and funny and fun I liked it. I'll check that out. Good for them. Okay, Kit Cuddy. But speaking of um, rap niggas in, um, you know, tank tops and jewelry and, you know, drooling for a living, let's talk about the baby if we have to. Oh, God. <laughs> if we must. Let's do it. So, I mean, I feel feel like we talked about the confirmation of her i mean him having um yellow bones baby or whatever that song was called <laughs> um, i think it was yellow bone actually <laughs> god so him and danny lay have a baby together three month old girl um and they had some dramatic ass ghetto upn ass <laughs> Dumbass, extra long for no reason, weird ass beef moment on Instagram Live today. 
it there's so many layers to this ratchet ass story. It's like a ghetto blooming onion. It's like mm-hmm. it's like a fucking ugh. It's like a mountain of ratchet post its. <laughs> It was like watching Summer Album's new, Summer Album, Summer Walker's new album. It was like watching that track list play out on Instagram. Did you see Live. Summer reach out to her? No, I didn't, but I am not shocked. You would. I'll get you probably that. even should, but. I mean, why wouldn't you? I'm out now. Remind me. Y'all can else. definitely, y'all are, yeah. She, who, she could relate, girl. She can relate. All right, so. Danny Lay and the baby have a, a baby together. Uh, and they were going off on each other today and used Instagram Live mostly by way of him um, to, I guess, share that with us. Now, I don't know what the fuck they were arguing about in like the first video I saw and another video I saw, like the first one I saw, she was like feeding the baby in bed Mm -hmm. and was like either in tears or very close to tears. And he's like recording her talking about doing it for him, his safety or to protect himself or some shit like that. in a very like, like mocking annoying type of voice. You know what I mean? Yep. But I also saw another video where it seems like he's sitting out in a living room or some shit like that with his baby mama, another woman, I believe, and then some guy. And he refers to her as like a side bitch. He says mm. something to the effect of, you know, be careful who you, you nut in or who you skeeting because you have to pay for it and blah, blah, blah. And just kind of like, you know, being an asshole and gaslighting her while she's like pacing back and forth and just sort of like, I don't know. She was doing way too much she talking just... in this clip for me, to be honest with you, and not enough like either swinging or collecting up her oh, things. Yeah, that's what, that was my first thought. Like, why would I even stick around for this conversation? Why am I still here walking unfold. back and forth right. talking to you and getting in the camera frame and all of this other shit? Like, but. But I am a very different person than I am a different person. And a how black old person. is this baby? <laughs> 26, I think. <laughs> so, you know, not an infant, but <laughs> sure. 26. <laughs> right. No. Well, yeah, that explains it. Not super grown either. Born in Miami. It was so difficult. For, well, we'll get there. But, you know, I don't know the first thing I knew about Danny Lee, I think, was this colorism thing. I don't even think it. I knew of her before the end. So I told you you met her. You right. No, you did say that. But, you know, I have no recollection of that. Why so. would you? <laughs> Why you exactly? didn't care when it happened. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Um. So... At some point, uh, Danny is once again on the the live, and she's now going back and forth with the police, who have been called down to the residence. Oh fuck! I didn't see that. God damn! This nigga called the cops on her. The po- okay, all right. For what? <laughs> to have her removed from the premises. Oh, okay. Um, and since then we've got multiple statements and further shady videos from both sides. Danny, I don't even, here's the thing. There's so many of them. I'm not even sure like the chronological order of a lot of this stuff anymore. Like, which? Well, apparently it was a couple of different incidents. So yeah, it was like a whole day's worth of shit. But this is what I'm saying. It was like Jesus multiple, Christ. but I'm talking about when they went their separate ways and then she like sat down and she filmed her piece and then he said some other bullshit and then they both had their own, you know, uh, iOS press releases that they put out. And so I like, all right, let's see what I can do here. Right. So she did a video where, you know, she's in tears and she's saying, I feel like it's so unfair, this situation. This whole time I've been nothing but straight with this man and tried nothing but genuine 
pure love for this man from the jump three years ago. It's just very mm-hmm. unfortunate. Um, she said she dropped everything to give her baby a good life and for her to know her dad, which is like, Oof. the core can do that, girl. But <laughs> I will go figure it out like I always have since I've been young, never depended on a man. Now, this is after I believe she was kicked out of the house and she says she didn't have another home in LA or anywhere else to go at that point. She said that um, basically now I think that that video was after he posted this long ass Instagram yeah. really a, a statement <sighs> let me zoom in small yeah I'm small. reading up on it now and I think it is too like I think she cause she's in that video I think she mentions this thing that he posted right yeah and it's yeah she's but she's like back in his home or still in his home like I'm trying to make sense of it but yes she says, "I no, he said, I would like to swiftly remove myself from any of the, quote, hostile behavior put on display moments ago. Mind you, he was filming, like, 80% of it. This mm-hmm. here thing has gone far enough for Shadi to crash out on her own, and it saddens me because I still got a queen to raise. The last hour has been documented for my safety and business done based on my oh business done based on my reputation with multiple threats of setting up an internet scheme and a person refusing to not let me go and for some reason like most of this is in white but he put not let me go in red like it's fucking like james wan film like it's the fucking conjuring or something like oh okay oh okay now i get it you know what <laughs> I mean you. like where it's like yes. white font and then one of the words goes red so you know it's going to be scary or someone dies got you calm well, down me calm and down. somebody else here knew to record her that being the other nigga who was in the room that he was talking to when he was saying that you know he was she was always a side bitch or whatever I done been beat on and yelled at and chased around like if them fatal love attraction type girls. To that I say, let's hear her out. Um, But I knew to keep it together. My team will be in contact with any and everybody we're in business with who mad need clarification. End of the day, no big deal. I don't want no charges pressed or nothing. I just want her peacefully removed which they need to hurry up, do as we speak. I ain't even want that behavior on display, but it's okay, man. This too shall pass. It's all good. My focus right now is solely on this new project out and this live show, Killer Tour, starting no- November 26th. Now, I'm not wow. going to lie to you. When I first read this sentence, I honestly thought it was going to end with the kid. Yep. I thought he was going to say my focus right now is solely on my children. But no, (laughs) of course it is. I mean, at least you didn't lie. (laughs) At least you spared us the lie. This time. Hate hate shoddy went out that way, but that ain't my business. (sighs) I'm a father first always and always will be. This re really me typing to no PR. I mean, nobody. We did not need that clarification. Yeah. PR would have run spell check on this. Yeah. Uh, PR would have told you not to post it. Yeah. PR would have said a person refusing to not let me go doesn't mean what you think it means. <laughs> it's mm. like when Future told Sierra that she wasn't. <laughs> Artemis. <laughs> Nobody. No. <laughs> body fixed it. nobody <laughs> right so you saying you know a person refusing to not let me go that doesn't that doesn't mean what you think it does so no i didn't think a public relations professional wrote this because this wouldn't have happened if you consulted somebody first um but you know i told y'all a couple months ago about that nigga and how i was just over it and over him and the situation is so are, is that is that all the details that we need before we talk about how trash he is, or is there something else? <laughs> <laughs> Not you are weary. <laughs> so let's read. Um, <laughs> I was going to give her a name that would have been inappropriate. Let's read Danny's statement. It says, "Hey guys, since baby want to put up a statement, she put statement in quotes, which." 
It's funny because I mean, it actually is a statement, right. but it, it's also but funny it's, because it's, I mean, is it, you know, we, like, right. it is, but it isn't. Since baby want to put up a statement with his cap ass, I'll put mine up. <laughs> That's what we do. Incredible. Incredible. Oh, I love the kids speak. So we've been living with each other for the past three months since our baby been born doing us. And tonight he want to come in. I love that she loves ellipses like I do. And tonight he want to come in the room talking about, I need to go. Don't matter where I go, mind you, I have a newborn child. Meaning he told her to get her ass out. Right. I have a newborn child. So he said, I can go to a hotel. This man is mad because I had a plan B sent to his condo. Because all he want to do is come in me with no responsibility. Obviously. Sounds right. Obviously, he probably want me out so he can fuck on his baby mother and other hoes who been known we've been together this whole time. Which lets me know that you n- have known about them at yep. some point in the three months. And, mm-hmm. anyway. and they certainly, I mean, before you got pregnant, certainly you were very well aware of. Rose on. <sighs> anyway, while I just had my first child, this all goes to say that this man is a fucking coward. I'm sleeping after cooking him dinner and he want to say I need to go. Fuck you, baby. And then I really should have just I really should have just listened to the cap ass Internet about this man. I'm a learn and I'm a grow. But this right here ain't it. And I'm sorry to my baby that her father is kicking her out her home at three months. I have so many things to say. First of all, yeah. it's hard when you call him baby and then also talk about the baby. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not that evolved or smart or anything like that. You know what I mean? I can't do, I can barely, like, keep up with children's optical illusions or basic right. puzzles. So, oof. Um, and then also. What's that nigga name? Harold? <laughs> I think it's Jonathan. Jonathan. I would have called Something him Something with a J. But, I mean, that's yeah. what the fuck I'm saying. So exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then where she says here, I really should have just listened to the cap ass internet about this man. First of all, if you're saying you should listen to the internet, was it cap? Secondly, (laughs) um, you really shouldn't have listened to the internet, sweetheart. You should have listened to this thing that's called discernment. At a, a point, you have to, you know, review the evidence, uh, like, uh, baby mama's before him, uh, yep. toxic things he says and does, um, you know, his constant need to come in you without uh, claiming you or your baby. Like those kinds of things are the things you should listen to before the internet. The internet helps. That can help. But, yeah. um, you know, just saying for that. His other baby mothers. like Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's just there's just no reason for you to think that you'll you'll be the exception. And, you know, maybe the fact that young girls are going through this same situation back to back will help the other ones realize that, like, really, you need to stop falling for that nigga's lies. Um, Because this is really like this is sad for you. I feel for you as a person, as somebody who just gave birth and you still mm-hmm. dealing with the after effects of all that. But yeah. it is hard to feel sorry for you because of the shit you say about black women. It's hard to feel um, sorry for you because you had so many warnings and so many girls don't. So many girls end up start with in relationships with niggas who seem to be perfect and everything's going great. And then when they get pregnant, everything goes to hell. Girl, like, well, you, didn't even, you can't even say that, though. But you can't even say that because baby been trash, been trash. So I will say like, yes. Baby specifically has had many wide open glaring signs that any one of us could have seen. Sure. But the whole like many of, I mean, I feel like someone who uses the wits that they should have could bump into this Mm. nigga down at, you know, any motherfucking TGI Fridays and be like, oh, he's probably trash. I should, if anything, fuck him and then keep it moving. 
You know what I mean? Like, it's way too many. I think there's way too many people that are fucking with people with motherfuckers that are very obviously garbage. And in one way or the next are telling you all of this. Y'all just spent like three weeks doing all these fucking red flag emoji shits getting on my goddamn nerves. So it's like, y'all know it, but you're always like, there's always the motherfucker that's like, oh, I'm not going to get caught up. And you know damn well that you are. Or I can change. It's not going to be like that with me. I'm going to be the different one. That's the case here. Or both. You, this might be both. Mm-hmm. Whereas with the case with this young lady. You know what I mean? It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Because a lot of the I'm niggas saying. that we are talking about don't hide the fuck nigga very well. They're not right. very good. It, I mean, y'all like, just be taking chances. <laughs> so You don't even have that. You can't even be like, he was perfect. Everything was great. I had no reason to think he would be an absolute shit human being to me. Like, you don't even have that to hide behind. So it's just like... I also... I feel for your infant. I feel for the infant. I really do. I also, um, you know, felt a, a bit of sympathy for her simply because, like... I've said over and over again that, you know, the whole bringing a baby into the world just from the physical standpoint to me is mind blowing. And then, you know, things like postpartum depression and all kinds of stuff. It's it's real and it's difficult. Um, and then you're dealing with someone that is an out and proud um, blockhead. And... <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't ready for blocking. <laughs> Just by watching the way that he speaks to you and about you in this video, I can't imagine the things. And like, I don't condone anybody putting hands on anybody in a relationship or anything like that. Um, but I'm just like, I know that there's just tons and has probably been tons of toxicity in that place for the longest motherfucker time. Now is the moment for you to get your motherfucking ass up out of there or whatnot. And so it's like, I do feel, you know, a bit of of sympathy for her in that regard. But at the same time, I'm just like, yeah, I have to think about, like, Sweetheart, I that song. Like, when she said, she said in, in one part of her uh, confessional, she was like, um, you know... People already think I'm a, a fucking bird because of this man or something like that. And I'm like, no, actually, I think that you were a bird because you made a whole ass song about him liking you for your skin tone, or your skin complexion versus right. his darker skin baby mother or whatever. Like, yep. he wouldn't. It was that. Like, you're never, ever, ever above getting done like the last bitch. Nobody, never. never. I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't give a fuck how wet your pussy is. I don't give a fuck how much money you got, how pretty your hair is, long your hair is, eyes are. I don't give a fuck about none of that. I don't care. You're never, ever above getting treated like the last bitch. Ever. So don't fool yourself into thinking that you're ever different. And damn, I'm sure definitely not writing no motherfucking songs about it. Sweetheart, move around. I mean, you know it now. You definitely know it now. But yes, that I was definitely. That was the lesson here, girl. I have empathy. Like, I can understand your feelings, Miss Danny Lightskin, but I don't share them. And I don't, I feel sorry for you in as much as you are a girl in her mid 20s and you have a fresh newborn, and that's a shit situation to be in with a horrible man. But again, I really feel for the infant who calls the both of you parents because it's a lot of, mess going on here this little black girl being raised by you with your colorist issues and then that nigga is her daddy jesus christ like start the therapy fund now because god damn and then baby like i just i don't i I really don't understand i I really don't even understand how you can be like all that matters is my child i'm focused on raising a queen and then Treating her mother like that at the same time. It cannot be. Those cannot coexist. You are, no. Mm-mm. Mother aside. Woo. 
First with of your all, child, like your baby's right there while y'all are doing all this. This is when I sincerely was like, I actually like I'm I always feel for the kid first in in situations like this. But I super yeah. felt for the kid when I saw her for the first time by way of all of this fucking drama. And then you, her dad, are literally putting her in the camera and showing us to her because of this Woo! drama, knowing that her mother purposely has not posted her or whatever because she don't want her on the internet or whatever like that. And Like, why do you even feel good about introducing her to the world through these circumstances? Like, you're literally doing it as a way of being petty. Like, who does that? Right. So. Right. And, I'm and you want me to think. The year. <laughs> you girl. want me to think that you don't. You have not dr- driven this girl to wit's motherfucking end while she was staying at this house or doing whatever the fuck. Woo. Both of y'all can get in the bed, to be honest with you. Yeah. I really don't. Yes. This is a perfect example of please leave us out of it. This was. Every part of it, I don't even know who started it, but every bit of this should have been left off the internet and we should not have been privy to not one single fucking word. You were doing really well goddamn mess. <laughs> like you had the baby, had the pregnancy, all that stuff. Both of y'all shut the fuck about it because you already knew what time it was. Um, and I loved it. That was great. When I didn't have to hear anything <laughs> when we didn't hear from you guys, that was nice. see it come up in any of Bring my, that back research uh yeah i'd love that i'd love that because none of this was owed to anyone here we're not your therapists guidance counselors po true we're like we don't have anything going on over here for y'all mm-hmm. so that simply could have been a facetime to somebody's mother or pastor or somebody that you could have just kept that in. And at best, it would have been like a blind item or some shit like right. that. I don't know, whatever the fuck. But y'all be choosing to share this with us. It's never not. Well, I see on her Instagram stories that she and her child are out of the house and safe. So, yeah, but like, girl, were you Okay. Good for you. I'm glad to hear Summer that. Walker said, damn, niggas really ain't shit. Seeing shit like that really make my chest hurt. Brings a bitch flashbacks. Hashtag still over it. I'm going to pray for her. She should also put hashtag ad because that's what it feels like. Then she put <laughs> at Danny Lay, no cap, whatever you need, hit me. And I mean, whatever. What if she needs um, a yeah. feature? <laughs> I mean, she really might. Brown. I was going to say this. N- <laughs> I would not put it past either one of them to be like, yep, let's join together and let's do this thing. We're going to remix one of the songs off of that album. And well, all the, I don't know what Dan he's Lee talking about some, like as an artist, but I wouldn't put that past them at all. He's talking about some, oh, her family disowned her, her family mad because she had a black baby or a baby with a black man or whatever. She made a song called Yellow Bone. Right. And you, you knew who the fuck her family was and yes. where they were from. Right. You know who Please she was. Please get out of my face. You nutted in that woman on purpose, knowing how she felt. And kept doing it. You probably put the battery Everybody in her back about being so light skinned. She probably felt empowered to make that song because of you. Everybody I'm not even up. getting into the whole conversation about whether she's even black because niggas have been swearing all day it. that she I is not actually it. black. And I, I'm not going to get into it because I really don't know if she is or isn't. But either way, care. she was dead ass wrong. <laughs> right. Either way, she was wrong and you was wrong. And now what? And now we in now we in it. Black people can't be colors. <laughs> Just uh, grow the fuck up, everybody. Grow the fuck up. What kind of shit is this? What are you Don't doing? What are you showing your children? Like, god damn. Maybe I'm just over just it. Came through. I don't have COVID. Tired. Oh, okay. Congratulations. But yeah, yeah, tired of niggas, tired of nigga behavior, and just really ready for everybody. I see now why y'all was like, Crystal, you need to cut Lawrence some fucking slack. You need to be nice. Because he's trying. And yes, he moved away while she was pregnant. Trying to be. (laughs) No, the girls were mad at me. Like, you need to cut Lauren some fucking slack because he is at least trying to be a dad. And he's trying to be there. And Condola needs to let him in. And I'm like, 
two things can be true. Yes, Condola does need to give up some things. She's going to have to trust this man. He is this child's father. But also, this nigga was dead wrong. And <laughs> you're not just going to be able to parent. Don't parent from a distance and then try to come in and critique me and the way I'm doing things. Like, nigga, you're not even here. But now I see why y'all feel that way. Because y'all going through Summer Walker type shit. Y'all going through Danny mm. Lee type shit. So a nigga actually showing up and trying to be a daddy, you like, bitch, I wish. But girl, just wow. because the bar is in hell does not mean that that's what you or anybody else should settle for. This is insane treatment. Hell no. He should never be treating her like this. And hell no. She should never think it's that that's what she's worth. sadder to me that this is so relatable. Yeah. It is. It's actually really sad. It was very triggering to a lot of people. It got people deep in their feelings because they are going through this shit right now or were until they grew up and left their trifling ass baby daddy alone because he wasn't shit. Worst case scenario should be Lawrence. It should. And even that is even that whole thing, the way that all started out, even that is unacceptable. But still. That should be the worst of it. Definitely shouldn't be no nigga going live on Instagram c- calling you a certified side bitch. 12 weeks after you pushed his child out of your vagina. Girl. Oh, these niggas. My God. I really don't know what it's going to take for y'all to start treating women like humans. I don't know. But it's just really wild that she's a certified side bitch. I know. And, you and still it's going to her. I can't suggest it because then I'll you be still, implicated in probably several crimes. I mean, it, that's probably illegal what you want to say. But like you reproduce with this woman that you're saying now is nothing but a side bitch. And yet you nutted in her. You made her a baby mama. I mean, who cares what he said about her being to the side, the front, the back, the rear, the left hemisphere? We already know. It's what just time the it point is. that niggas don't. Nobody, make sense. Everybody knows that the bitch can't lie. Like we know that the baby just be talking out of the side of his motherfucking ass. We've done this. We did this after Rolling Loud. We've watched him just come on and just start speaking. I don't even think he thinks about it or whatever. He probably just faces a blunt and then gets on the motherfucking live. You know what I'm saying? A whole head full of frontal leaf, and then he just starts the act. And whatever comes out goes. It's very Trump like. Um uh and so it's not, you know, I, yeah. I I literally didn't take anything that he was saying seriously because it's the baby. I barely took what she was saying seriously, to be honest with you. So God bless the infant. <sighs> and right. I'm sure if nothing else, baby. that baby has aunts and uncles. That will be hopefully, um, yeah, the energy that the child needs if it is not in the right places with mom and dad. Yeah, really praying these parents can I don't get know, their shit the together. Mimas, the memes, the memes, people. It is your like. <laughs> your kids are the ones who will suffer from y'all's behavior. Just so you know, I'm done. That's it for hot tops, right. and we'll move on. Hey, y'all, this week's episode is being brought to you by Quip. It is the electric toothbrush that's loved by over 7 million mouths. And that's because it's timed sonic vibrations with 30-second pulses. It's doing a guided, dentist-recommended two-minute cleaning. It's also got a lightweight and sleek design for adults and kids with no wires and no bulky charger to weigh you down. It's got a multi-use travel cover that doubles as a mirror mount for less clutter. And it's got reusable handles and a range of sleek metal hues. On top of your brushing, you can upgrade your Quip with a new smart motor to track and improve your brushing with the free Quip app and earn amazing rewards like free refills products, Target gift cards, and more. Beyond the brush, Quip has everything you need to build a complete routine. Anti-cavity toothpaste, reusable floss pick that replaces over 180 disposable picks with every refill, and refillable mouthwash that's a four times concentrate, plus it's good for you and the planet. In addition to brush heads, Quip also delivers fresh fresh floss, toothpaste, mouthwash, and gum refills every three months from five dollars shipping's free so you can save money and skip the hustle and bustle of in-store shopping i have a quip toothbrush myself as i've mentioned before it's my favorite toothbrush because it does all of the fancy techie things that i like but also because it looks like a toothbrush that a super spy would use it really does it makes me feel like i work for bosley 
Bozzy was who they worked for, right? No, Bozzy was the guy that they worked with. Charlie was who they... If you go to getquip.com slash the read right now, you'll get your first refill for free. That's first refill free at getquip.com slash the read. That's spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash the read. Quip, it's the Good Habits Company. Now let's move on. Hey, y'all, now's the perfect time to sign up with Squarespace and turn your cool idea into a new website. With Squarespace, you'll find what you need, whether you're showcasing your work, publishing content, starting a blog, selling products and services, announcing upcoming events, or literally anything else you can dream of. Buying a domain from Squarespace is easy because there are no hidden fees or price hikes, and you can get to know your audience with their great analytics tools. These include insight on page views, traffic sources, time on site, audience geography and more it's everything you need when you're running ads and sending that information back to the advertisers and it is so easy to get started you just pick out a design template and then use drag and drop tools to make it all your own and all sites are optimized for mobile as soon as they're finished so your site looks great on any device kip and i have both used squarespace before um i use it to update my personal website very very rarely and uh also used it to design this is the read.com again because i needed something that even i could use and as somebody who never really got into coding any deeper than myspace it could not be easier to use so head to squarespace.com slash read to start your free trial and when you're ready to launch use offer code read to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a site or domain that's squarespace.com slash read offer code r-e-a-d for 10 percent off your first purchase let them know we sent you and let's get back to the show we're back to the program and now it's time to read your drama Yes, it is. Um, send your questions to asktheread at gmail.com. We may just read them aloud on the show. Our first letter this week, hmm, let's see. Let's start with Tyler. Tyler said, Hi, Chris Link, if you're in, my boyfriend and I started dating three months ago. We met on Grindr Sorry and there was an that. instant connection. I knew right away that this wouldn't be just a hookup. I'm 27 and he's 24. At the beginning, I told him, at the beginning, like that wasn't three months ago. <laughs> at the beginning, I told him that I was moving to the Pacific Northwest in June of 2022 for a job opportunity. And about a month ago, we decided that he would come with me. We're completely infatuated with each other. And this is like no other relationship I've had before. We're communicating our needs and talking about our emotions, things that neither of us have been good at in the past. And I can see this lasting a long time. Yeah. Now we both have the itch for him to move in with me right now. I see value in testing the waters before moving across the country together, but I'm also worried that moving too fast would jeopardize something great that has long-term potential. Do y'all think three months is too soon to move in? Are we, yes. mis- are, we <laughs> are we risking a breakup by moving too quickly? Please let me know. I'm stuck somewhere between living a fearful life and taking leaps of faith. Much love, Tyler. Tyler, uh, he's in love. They're sprung. <laughs> why the fuck would you want to live with somebody after three months? Because mm. it's you've never felt this way about anybody. You've been swept off your feet. I, Shouldn't I'm, I'm that guessing. be like... <laughs> Further reason to be cautious and say, hmm, maybe I shouldn't because I've never felt this way before and I don't know what. I don't know. I just feel like I don't understand why if you had the choice uh, to not live with your nigga, you would choose anything else. <laughs> um, A valid point. Three months? Yeah, that's no. my issue here, Tyler. Like... No. No. If I you, really, yeah. <laughs> what were you saying? If you have to go, uh, then, you know, all righty, bye. And you see what you can make work. Um, or you just go ahead and you break it off and go and see what uh, Grinder's hitting for in the, that's the beauty about the same the place that you met this exact same nigga at is that you can simply log right back onto it and find somebody wherever the fuck you're at. 
wherever the fuck you're at. Let me tell you something. If you are 20,000 leagues under the sea and there's dick down there, Grindr will tell you. So you can just go. And if it doesn't work, I think that's how the the thing goes. It sounds Mm, like, it sounds what it sounds like. So that's what I say. I feel like if you um, move in with this nigga, or even move across the country with this nigga into separate places, you're going to regret it. Um, mm. You will eventually resent each other when the relationship in, undoubtedly ends. And, uh, you know, then you're just going to be going back on Grinder in the new city anyway, except he will be too. And then y'all going to, you know, bump into each other down at the clubhouse. And it's going to be awkward. And then you're going to get drunk. And you're going to go with him instead of the new day. And then you're going to have sex with him. And then you're going to regret it the next morning. And then you're like, what does this mean? And you're like, I don't know what this means. And then you're going to ghost him. And then you're going to bump each other again at brunch with your new friends. And then you're going to think that your new friend is somebody that you're dating. And it's not. And then you're going to argue out in the parking lot. And you realize that they're mm. actually meant to be together. And it's to be like, oh my goodness, what does this all mean? I don't even think that I really understand what love is. And then you're going to go on several dates. And you're going to constantly be looking for him in all the further dates even though you shouldn't be looking for him in the first motherfucking place because that's never been healthy um and so then you know you're just going to end up really spiraling out of control looking for things you don't need to be looking for until finally you snap 10 years later and realize that you were wasting all of your time and now you're wow. older your knees hurt a lot more you've got lines in your face and you know oh, okay um, well, I took a turn. So, <laughs> yes, that is possible for sure. I think, um, I mean, I'm I'm not necessarily going to predict doom and gloom, but I will say three months. Anybody can be anything in three months. It's very easy to misrepresent yourself over the span of three months. And so... For those reasons, I say, yes, you are. I wouldn't even say risking a breakup by moving in too quickly. You're risking because a breakup is not the worst thing that can happen to you. You're risking being miserable. You're risking um, joining your life too quickly with somebody that you do not actually know. Like I get you're excited about him, but you don't know. You literally met that man this year. Like. It is entirely too soon to be talking about moving in together, much less moving across the country. And so I think I get the excitement because I get the feeling of like newly being in love and having a connection that you've never had with someone else before and that feeling very mutual. But, you know, you do still have to give it time. So I would just say make sure you take care of yourself if you do uh, decide to let this man move in with you or if y'all do decide to move across the country together, like. Make sure you're protected. You have your own things and you're always, you know, able to to take care of yourself. But it I don't think a single person, you know, would tell you that this sounds like a good idea. Not at three months, buddy, like six bare minimum, I would say. Oh, boy. Good luck to you, Tyler. Let us know how it goes. Um, Our next letter comes from Anita, who says, my boyfriend of over a year has asked me to stop using my favorite vibrator during sex because it's making him insecure. I recently got one of those clit sucking rose shaped vibes, and it's quickly become my favorite thing in the world. That shit gives me a toe curling orgasm in 10 seconds flat, and it has made an addict out of me. I introduced it into the bedroom a few weeks ago, and at first my boyfriend was down, thinking that it would be a fun thing to spice up sex, but I've reached for it every time since then. The combination of getting digged down while the toy does its thing gives me the best orgasms I have ever had. It's not that my boyfriend can't get me off, but the toy allows me to have multiple orgasms during sex, which I never had before. After the last time we had sex, my boyfriend asked if I could stop using the vibe because it makes him feel like he's not doing a good job of pleasing me. I tried to reassure him, but he said it would be insulting if he went out and brought a pocket pussy to bed with me. So this is the same thing. It really isn't, you fucking dumbass. It isn't because you have different organs than she does. You literal dumbass. Continue. I explained how it intensifies my orgasms, but then I made the mistake of saying that him getting me off is like walking while my vibe is like driving a car. Well, Both get you, you to your destination, <laughs> but one is a lot more efficient and powerful. You made it worse. You definitely did. I guess this offended him because yeah. then he pivoted and said bringing foreign objects into bed is ruining foreign ruining the intimacy objects. of sex for him. <laughs> like it's a knife. And he says, 
<laughs> and he says he never wants to use any sort of toy in bed ever again. I felt bad after the intimacy comment, so I agreed, even though I like using the vibe with him more than I do alone. Should I officially retire my beloved vibrator or can I tell him to shut up and let me get this nut in peace? Is there any way to compromise on using toys in bed while maintaining intimacy? Blessings to you both, Anita. Mm, this isn't about I don't know intimacy. I y'all fuck these <laughs> niggas. I, 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 <sighs> yeah, I don't think this is about intimacy. This is about him feeling threatened by a toy plastic ru- rubber <laughs> whatever they're whatever it's made out of I, yeah how do you not understand this is my like how do you not take the time in all of the years that this fucking shithole has been spinning on its axis to figure out how a woman's box operates. There's just some things you can't do, (laughs) doll baby. And that's fine. (laughs) That's fine. But why should she... Listen, listen, listen. I'm about sick of niggas. Because... Yep. I already have to deal with your shit. Okay, I already had to deal with your shit many times. Niggas don't even know what they're doing with the dick so that I I can be comfortable in that hallway. Okay, you know what I mean? So that we can even have fun (gasps) in in that direction. (laughs) Okay, but even if you're killing it there, Mm. why should I not take myself to my peak? Right. Why can't I blast my like, why not? You're going to go as far as you can, bitch. Blast off. Yes. What's the problem? It's not that you're not doing what you're supposed to do. It's that this is a cherry on top. Pun intended. Right. So. So what now? I have to just not enjoy sex the way that I've been enjoying it because it hurts your fifis? <laughs> Come on, fifis. Are you fucking kidding me? You act like I invited Lakeith Stanfield in here to, f- to suck on my clitoris while fucking Jonathan Majors licks one Ooh. nip and Tyler Le- Lepley sucks my other titty and you watch. You act like I'm asking you to get cucked by Black Hollywood. <laughs> it's a sex toy. Oh, ooh. Okay. Mm, he is fine. Who are you? Are you Googling? Tyler, Tyler like? Lepley. I had to Google that. And he's uh, cute. I mean, but, mm. I mean, yes. I yes, he is. Niggas. The days this continue is... to go by where... He hasn't doesn't accept the love that I have, but it's fine. one day. It'll one day. change one day. He's yeah, happy in a relationship you. with a very beautiful woman. Oh, he's straight. Okay, sorry. Well, no, it might. It probably won't happen then. But you know, one of those wow. other boys. Wow. <laughs> I mean, everybody I'm in love with is also happily married. So I'm right over here with you. <laughs> it's not happening for me either. I didn't say you're so. happily married. Oh. Well, happy with somebody who isn't me. So, <laughs> Anita, girl, <laughs> don't fall for this intimacy thing. I'll say that. Don't fall for the uh, it, it. The foreign objects are weird now, and I just want to focus on us. That nigga is in his feelings because you nutted harder than ever before when y'all brought the toy in, and instead of being excited about that like instead of using that as motivation to be even better in bed so that you have even better orgasms he decided to be like oh no shut that shit down it's just so weird to me that men can see their partners having a good time during sex and be like let's not do this no more (laughs) what (laughs) that is the most ass backward fucking logic like 
I see it's you're like enjoying she's asking this. Asking you like, <laughs> this is fine. Like your penis inside of my body. It, it's, it's like it's good. It's okay. I like that. But could you actually FaceTime your brother while we're doing this? Because that's <laughs> what would really take me over a bit. Like, how are you offended? Who cares? Right. right. This Did, just... Would it help if he used the toy on you? Like, I, I'm imagining that you're stimulating yourself with the toy while he's fucking you. Would it help Probably. if he yeah. used it on you? Would that does that even work physically? Like, I mean, if he was, if he did it while he was fingering her, it could work. Maybe it might be harder. If, I'll be like, if he, uh, yeah, wasn't. Bitch, you get me there then. All right, next session, I will leave this shit, mm. you know, in the you know my thong drawer, and you get me there. You do it. You do it. And if you can get me there. You won't, I'll, I'll, you'll never, ever see it ever again. But if mm. you can't take me to where this thing helps get me, I don't mm -hmm. understand what the problem is. And I already know what the answer to that is going to be. And at that point, I feel like, oh, how long have they been together? Uh, a little over a year. Okay, that's not, uh, that's no time. <laughs> so This is a pandemic relationship. <laughs> it don't even count if you don't want it to. At that point, it was nice because guess what? I know my body, honey, because like, you can go. Yeah, You know, I can find somebody who doesn't feel threatened by a rechargeable toy. That's Or what I, I can find some more rechargeable toys in the meantime until that <laughs> nigga gets here. Or that you can. But like you are experiencing multiple orgasms for the first time. Again, just endlessly sad for straight women. But. Like the fact that you are enjoying yourself so much and this man is like, we can never do it again to me is um, I, I don't know if I'll say a red flag, but it's definitely a conversation worth having. And let's be clear, you were dead wrong for being like, <laughs> you're a walk while this is a fucking Mach 5 or whatever. Like that was unnecessary. You didn't have to say that, especially because you said he is good at sex. So you could have left that part out of it and you can maybe apologize for that because that didn't need to be said. But it is a fact that sex is like it's not like his penis comes with an attachment that will suck on your clit while he's fucking you, because <laughs> if it could, then y'all wouldn't be having this conversation. And again, the fact that he's like, well, what if I got a pocket pussy? Are you going to sprout another dick so you can fuck both of us at the same I just, time? I don't understand. It's like, this is why I don't understand. This is why I don't understand. This is why I don't understand how me, me, a gay man who <laughs> has no interest in ever We're interacting right. with a vagina again, outside of the one time I did on the day of my birth. Yeah. How do I... <laughs> understand why this a white works b white's necessary and c white ain't got nothing to do with you nigga right. like how do like y'all be fucking women in their vaginas all of the time and know nothing about them this that is the true tragedy of it all like y'all been doing this for years and why does it nothing about you? what's going on why does it bother you for no because good reason I know niggas that not only have no problem with their woman using a sex toy while they have sex. I know niggas that will purchase the sex toys oh, yeah. for them. Oh, yeah. Because you know what they like? You know what really turns them on? Their sex partner climbing the walls, going yep. cross-eyed, wow. sweating wow. out their fucking weeds, and wow. all of that other shit. Like, that's what they like. And that's wow. who you should be giving your pot body parts to. Not these niggas yes. that are like, well, you need to throw that away because what if I did, 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 did. Why don't you, like, I don't understand. what? Right. I agree completely. So if your boyfriend has an attitude after you try to talk to him about this and he insists on not using the toys, I would just say to you, you said you prefer fucking him over just using the toy. Like you prefer doing both. But like if you said, you can always buy other toys to supplement till you find another nigga. And as much as you enjoy it now, imagine how much better it's going to be when you with a man who wants to see you have a good time. 
again, your boyfriend sees you having incredible orgasms and ruining the sheets and is like, "Mm -mm, cut that off. So, yeah, if he can't, I would say if he can't adjust to this, then that's a great reason to break up and to leave that relationship exactly where it's at. Um, let's go ahead and end the questions right there. We're running a bit late. We went, <laughs> uh, we had a lot to say about them hot topics. So again, send your questions to ask the read at gmail.com. We're going to take another quick break and be right back. So it's officially around that time of the year where everyone is getting ready to spend a lot of their money, uh, on gifts for folks in their lives. And many of you might be running a place where people can buy gifts for loved ones in their lives. And let me tell you something. I know you in hell. I know you in hell right now because it's the worst time of the year for people who are selling things. It's a hassle. But with Ship Station, it doesn't need to be because they will make sure that you leave your customers happy and you have more freedom to run a business and enjoy some much te- needed time off at the same time. With ShipStation, you can easily import orders from every sales channel, whether it's Etsy, eBay, Amazon, or your very own website, and automate just about any shipping task. ShipStation works with all the major carriers internationally and locally, including FedEx, USPS, and UPS. And you can even get access to discounted rates that are usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies because you're special. Okay. And Alex uses our Alex <laughs> uses mm-hmm. ship station to send out our read merch, including lots of uh, new items that you may have ordered and new sizes and new flavors and things of that nature. And this basically just pulls everything all together and makes sending it out incredibly easy. So it can be done and you can get back to, Drinking your coquito or whatever. Thank you guys, internet, for reminding me what that was a few weeks ago. And also that it is Puerto Rican and not Dominican. You were very upset with me about that. Um, Mm -hmm. I apologize. Make this holiday season a little brighter with ShipStation. Use my offer code READ to get a 60-day free trial. Just enough time to handle the holiday rush. Go to ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top and enter code READ. ShipStation. Make ship happen. Let's move on. Hey, y'all. This episode is also brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. Win or lose, every little league team or whatever team you might have been on still ends up at McDonald's after the game to either have your celebratory meal together or to just commiserate and cheer each other up with some food. And you end up feeling like you won no matter what when you look around at that table and see the faces of the people you love the most. You can always depend on McDonald's Wi-Fi when you need it. I know I wasn't the only one who had some late night study sessions or work that needed to be done and had to crash a McDonald's and borrowed a Wi-Fi real quick. And everybody has been to or had a McDonald's birthday party at some point in their life. I know I did. Stacking them little Big Mac containers when I was like five years old. I mean, the pictures still exist. And there's a good chance that you or somebody you know got your first job at McDonald's or maybe you stopped by five times when your friend was working the counter and you know what you was doing in there. We ain't got to say it, but you know what you was doing. We all know McDonald's is the pit stop destination you can rely on during every road trips. And if you drive up to McDonald's on a Thursday evening and it's especially busy, it might be the Meemaw's in there having their bingo night, okay? Again, McDonald's been in the community since 1965. I'm loving it. All right, let's wrap up the show. We're back. It's time to wrap up the show now with the read. Take it away. It is. I really don't have um, much to say this week. Um, yeah, I want to talk uh, very quickly about the Julius Jones story. If you don't know about it, um, Julius Jones has been on death row in Oklahoma since 1999. He um, is adamant about not being guilty of murdering this man. The facts don't line up. There's been a lot of shady shit um, going on with like the evidence, like the, the entire story is absolutely fucking crazy, but um, I'm talking about it today because we are just a few days away from him 
Um, from this execution being scheduled, the Oklahoma governor has said that he will not take a meeting with Julius Jones's family. And it's just endlessly frustrating, um, obviously, as people who care about, you know, others and who care about black people wrongfully on death row to be in another situation where it feels like we are fighting against this system that is determined to not give a single fuck about us at every step of the way. But I urge you to sign the petition demanding justice for Julius Jones case. Um, go to the justice for Julius Jones website. They have published the phone numbers of the governor's office. Please blow them niggas up. Please email them um, and let them know that this execution needs to not happen again, endlessly fucked up and, um, my prayers to him and his family. I'm absolutely hoping for the best, but girl, I know Oklahoma, so I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. It is such a fucked up situation. Um, and I also want to cuss out one of my teachers real quick. I'm really, really tired of this bitch. I'm really mad at this bitch. Um, like this lady... <laughs> I don't know what it is about this semester. Maybe other students can chime in and let me know. But this is my third semester of Zoom school. Overall, I like Zoom school because I find people to be very irritating and they're less irritating in a digital sense. Um, but this semester has been like so much harder for me to get through than previous semesters. And one of the reasons is because of my bitch ass professor. Now, me and this lady started off on the wrong foot because of, I'll call it a miscommunication. I feel like she should have been more clear since she wanted to be explicit about everything else. But basically, we um, we got into it over one of my quiz grades. We traded some emails. Um, and I ended the conversation by saying, you know what, I just feel like you could have been clear in your instructions here. But since you weren't, I'll take that L fine. So we had an exam last week, right? I devote my time, like at least 18 hours I have studied for this exam just over the past, like the week leading up to it. I was completely ready for this exam. This bitch docked me 10 points off of one of my essay questions. Again, because she was not clear in her instructions of what she wanted me to say. And so when I emailed about her about it, I said, because I typed out, she gave us the essay prompts in advance so we would know what we were talking about. So I typed up the majority of what I was going to say in advance and I pasted it in the email and sent it to her and was like, please tell me how you gave me this prompt and my response warranted a 10 point deduction. Please tell me because I'm reading it again and I'm blown away by my brilliance. So, I mean, I didn't say that part, but I was really confused. And this bitch came back and was like, I'm not asking you to say ABC. I'm asking you to say a BC. And I was just like, you know what? I said, Professor, perhaps I'm not sharp enough to read between the lines of what it is you are trying to say. But I expect people who brag about how intelligent and educated they are and how long they've been teaching and how every student adores them and how they are very clear and how anytime anybody has a question in class, like the number one response she has is check the syllabus. Everything's on the syllabus. The syllabus is very detailed. The syllabus is very clear. I lay it all out on the syllabus. The syllabus is available to you on Blackboard. The syllabus was given, okay, bitch, and yet none of this shit that you're docking me for is in the syllabus. And yet you still taking it out on me, bitch. Like my life's not hard enough. Like I'm not already, like I'm struggling now to stay in school because I am so worn out. Like I just am so burnt out. I need this winter break so fucking bad. I need a break from school so fucking bad. But it is also because of people like you stressing me the fuck out unnecessarily. If you have explicit instructions and you're explicit in every fucking thing else you do, then don't penalize me for your lack of clarity. That don't make sense. And it's not even like this. I'm talking about 10 points overall here or like another eight points overall here. But it's enough to get on my fucking nerves because I try. I don't know if you are fed up with 
Zoom students not giving a fuck or half assing things. I really don't know what your issue is. Maybe you have personal shit going on that's influencing the way you act. But some of us are really fucking trying out here. And you can tell that I am putting effort into my fucking work. You know that. And you know that it is your lack of clarity that led to me doing the things I did. So again, how is it all on me? I don't get it because most of my professors are very understanding. They are very clear. They say what they mean and they don't expect you to infer what they really meant. This bitch told me. She was like, I see what you're saying, but I just feel like you were trying to game the system. <laughs> I literally I said, I have to go. I literally hung up the the Blackboard collaborative chat. I, I literally disconnected myself from the blackboard collaborative because i could not believe she was saying that to me bitch this class is not that fucking challenging it's not i would not be coming to you if i was wrong that is the thing about me i'm accountable to my damn self i know when i simply got things wrong i know when i misread that's why i go back and read again that's why i review my things but I, I'm, I'm not incapable of being wrong. I would not be coming to you about this and having the same issue with you multiple times if it was on me. You are struggling with being clear and yet you refuse to accept that it is your issue. Because why would I be coming to you twice about your instructions not being what they are and you be saying to me, oh, well, <laughs> I just feel like you're trying to game the system. How? When I read the instructions you provided. <sighs> I'm just, I need a break real bad, real bad. And I might not go back next semester because school is just absolutely kicking my ass. So I just had to get that out yeah. because I just had, I just emailed this woman the other day. Like, I'm not going to reach out to you again. I'm just going to read your instructions and interpret them the best I can and pray for the best because I have no idea what the fuck you're on. It don't make sense to me, but fuck you endlessly. <sighs> okay i'm done i'm done all right um this week i just have a couple things uh first where should i begin okay first let me say should i start small and then go back i really don't know what to order all right I will say first to uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, I really don't even want to like, I are, I get it. I see what this is. This isn't even so much about this dopey ass boy as much as it is about, you know, the continued ability to shoot however the fuck we want to, specifically people that are black. Oh, man. So like, yeah. I, I get what this is and where it's going. Um, so I'm not really expecting anything or much from this trial, but while I will, what I do want to say is two things to two people to Kyle, you too ugly to be making them faces and making them and being disingenuous in it. You know what I mean? Like Whoa. you're already hard to look at just mm -hmm. stone, just you. you know, yeah. just being yourself what you put us through making those faces i want you to know should they should convict you on that as well like i feel like that should also you should be charged for that yeah. and there should mm -hmm. be time added, added to on. whatever so um i'm once again disgusted and offended that you would take your big ugly ass face up on the motherfucking stand and do all of that fucking shit he looked like you know in Mario when like the bob bomb sees you and then it's like starts to wild out and then it turns red it starts blinking yes. red and it's about to explode. And then it, yes. He looked like a like one of the bob bombs in Mario that was about to mm -hmm. but unfortunately I was waiting for him to to blow up and then be gone forever. Just, but right. unfortunately that unfortunately didn't did not do that. Yeah. I feel you. I saw that too. That acting it was horrible. It was like Brazzers bad. It was like <laughs> <laughs> What are you please <laughs> not Brazzers? Fucking piece of shit. And then the judge 
Oh, just adopt him. Why don't you just put him in a Pokeball? Listen. And just take him around where he can, you know, battle other people who are just, you know, mind of their own damn business. Um, <sighs> that judge said everything, but this, you are like, you know, the racist son that I mm-hmm. always wanted. Wish I had. Yep. He did. And um, we should do drinks. Teach you the ropes. I haven't even followed it. I haven't even followed the trial because I know there's it was nothing to follow. Else. I saw two clips, and it was the one with him. I saw three actually. One with him doing whatever the fuck that facial acting Three Stooges Charlie mm-hmm. Chaplin ass garbage was, and then <laughs> one with his mama doing something equally dramatic and fake, and then another with the judge who looked like Statler and Waldorf cussing out the prosecution oh over some my shit God. that I don't even. So everybody over there is a chop. Next. Um, so I want to bring it back to uh, something I mentioned, I believe, last week, which was the read on something I bumped into when I went to Target to get my personals. I was talking about um, dude wipes, which I saw for the first time, which is apparently some wipes marketed to dudes. Mm-hmm. Bathroom wipes. That were also apparently on Shark Tank, and I guess the people who created them are wealthy. Um, so a couple of y'all are, I guess, fans and wanted to let me know they're not like regular wipes, the bigger <laughs> or whatever, and like whatever all the other things are that you like about it. Now, here's the thing: I didn't doubt, I didn't think that the wipes themselves would be trash. You know, like I, Mm -hmm. the least they could do is make them just as good as any other wipe on the market. Right. Um, I don't know what them being larger has to do with. Um, but overall, I think that a couple of you missed the larger point, which was that it wasn't about these wipes at all. The point that I was attempting to make is that I think it's just incredibly ridiculous that we. Um, live in a society that still feels the need to broify um, simple things yep. that don't need to be because, you know, so many guys, I guess, are uncut- like calling it guy liner doesn't change Girl. the fact that you're wearing makeup, Helen. Right. And this is just, you know, hygiene. So why Bro- can't it just be extra large wipes? Why is it dude wipes? <laughs> broga girl girl just go stretch this is so dumb (laughs) you can like these things it doesn't make you a woman it doesn't make you gay it makes you clean it makes you weak or small or anything a person who moves their body girl you're doing a lot i don't know when it's food sometimes it's not so bad because i find that a lot of times when it's like bro food it just means a lot and fine. <laughs> like, I'm always down for more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the um, Hungry Man meals. Yeah, like the, the Hungry Man meals. Man or whatever. Like, right. bro, food just means, like, there's a whole lot more on the plate. Which is fine. That also, it's like, so. Yeah, no. I mean, I could also feel products that products for me. There. But yeah, right. it's like, <laughs> just, again, I feel like I also landed when we discussed the dude wipes initially, at least you're wiping. And you're using a wet wipe at that, which means that you're much further. And it's actually kind of scary that it takes <clears throat> for you to think about doing it. Yeah, it is. You know, but no shade to them. I mean, it isn't shade, it's a read. So, <laughs> you know, I said what I meant and I meant what I said. And if you use it or if you are sleeping with someone that uses it, more power to you. It's no offense to anyone. I just feel like, you know, you could just call it wipes or yogurt or, right. you know, joggers or what. I don't know. Whatever the fuck right. they are. Um, last but not least, uh, Insecure happened. It's in- Insecure Monday. Yay. Uh, Yay! Well, it's Instagram Monday for us. 
So I just want to talk about <laughs> this nigga Thomas, was it? <laughs> oh, Christ. Okay, I thought you was going to talk about Nathan and Issa getting together. Spoiler alert if you didn't see it yet. But yes, Thomas. Okay, yeah. Ooh, this was a miss. Yeah, that's a runaway train, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um. Ooh. So, Issa and the gang uh, went out to the beach. Nathan and some of his friends were also out at the beach, and they had a fun um, LA beach day. It was all cute. And Molly had short hair and she was macking and it was lovely. Mm-hmm, being cute. Uh, ugh, a face. Yvonne is so pretty. Yvonne is gorgeous. Um, so at some point, Nathan's cousin Thomas and his cousin's wife, Velma? Mm hmm. Of all the names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. She was raised, she was raised by her grandma, like <laughs> and named from day one, right? Yeah. They <laughs> gave her <laughs> her grandma gave her her mom's name. <laughs> so <laughs> Thomas and Velma pull up to wherever they were at or whatnot, and immediately the, you can see, sense like some tension or whatnot, especially with Velma. So of course, I thought Nathan fucked his, his cousin's wife. Oh yeah, we all did. Wife. We fucked did. His cousin's wife. We wow. all thought that scandalous because they had just got over. I'm not going to tell you the whole episode. The point is, it turns out after um, both Velma and then later Thomas decide to leave when Nathan and the gang are trying to enter a Jason Derulo concert or party, which was like <laughs> they knew what they were doing when they chose them. They to. did. And having the one nigga who was like randomly a weird Jason Jarrell, that shit was so funny. I'm trying to fight. I'm trying to tussle. Like. That shit was hilarious. What did they say that he was in there doing? And then that nigga was like, oh, no, I'm not going to miss this. And like literally no, even... went sprinting to go and sneak into. Anyway. Probably something off of TikTok. Yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, so. You find out at some point that Nathan's cousin. um Basic okay, so you find out that Nathan stayed with his cousin and Velma at some point, and they kicked him out of the house. And he thought this entire time, and the tension was because he believed, Nathan believed, that Velma, the wife, was the person who wanted him gone and kicked out of the house because he was trifling and flighty and in and out of the, in out of the house and leaving the door mm-hmm. unlocked and just kind of being a you know a burden. And so we find out in this conversation with Thomas outside of the Jason Derulo function that actually it was Thomas the entire time that was over Nathan's shit and wanted him gone, but didn't know how to say anything to him, didn't want to say anything to him. So for whatever, (laughs) well, not for whatever reason, but Velma says, well, you know what? I'll take the fall. You can blame it all on me. I'll take the blame for it. And then, you know, there goes that way. Your cousin won't be mad at you or whatever. And this is what they agreed to do. And we're going to continue keeping it under Mm -hmm. wraps, except for the fact that Nathan pried when he could tell that something wasn't right. I was so fucking triggered by this shit. Oh, no. Here's what I hate. As someone who lives with a mental and behavioral disorder, I can't speak for everyone, but I constantly have a fear that I am a burden to people around me. And a lot of times that manifests itself in ways that could be burdensome or just out of the ordinary or what, whatever. <laughs> I'm better at managing this, I think, than I was when I was in my 20s or didn't have any understanding of what this was. But it is still very difficult. And one thing that really, really makes it worse, like exacerbates the entire fucking experience 
is when people do all do these little hush hush weird things behind the curtain rather than just saying hey we need to talk about whatever the fuck is going on with you right is that a difficult conversation for people sure but nigga you decided to have your wife be to blame for kicking your cousin out on the motherfucking street and you were going to continue you could tell that that he doesn't like her. He's not even interested in her being around. And you would rather your cousin hate your wife. <laughs> yep. We're we'll just fine with that. Your decision, your thoughts, your fucking feelings. Mm-hmm. Then just say how the fuck you felt. You a grown ass motherfucking man. I hate that shit. Now, it doesn't mean that this nigga who's staying in your motherfucking house can just wild out or be crazy or do whatever the fuck. And you can't feel any kind of way or Mm -hmm. you know take him to task for it but he's your family right i'm glad like i really enjoyed these moments because i hope that they can uh allow specifically black people families and friends but especially families to do better in terms of communication on both sides, but especially on the side of people who see someone that they are close to or that they care about or that they're related to who's going through something, whether you know that it's mental or not, and needs something, like whether it is a conversation or assistance in some other, like, don't be doing all of this fucking Tom and Jerry ass shit, but you know where you hit the fucking dominoes and that shit hits a fucking right. a boot on a, a fucking swivel and then that hits a skateboard that knocks over a bucket of water. Don't be doing all of these fucking weird traps and shit in the background because you don't want to just come and tell me that I'm acting weird or that I'm doing this and that or you're confused or my attitude is stank or whatever. Because listen, I'm human. Mm-hmm. I may not always be in the place to hear the truth. What you know what I'm saying? You may come up to me and be like, hey, this and a third or whatever, it's not gonna work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I might just be like, you know what? I don't wanna have this conversation right now. Or you know what I mean? Like, yep. It's not to say that you won't ever be met with resistance, but me, I would much rather. Even if we scream at each other and I go my way and you go your way, two, three, four days, maybe a week later, I know that at least I can count on you keeping it real. And I will likely come back around and feel far more comfortable and safe with you and especially in communicating my issues with you if I know that you are going to be honest with me about it I will feel unsafe if I feel like you know something's up you know something is wrong but you would rather go and communicate with other people about it or just do a whole bunch of like shady shit and then like and hide it from me and then still come around when you want to or when you're ready and be like hee 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 ha 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 that shit to me was disgusting and fucked up. I'm glad that they wrote that in there because. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, why the fuck would you even like agree to go out and, and be like, yeah, I'll take the father. But I was like, you know what? Velma wanted this nigga out of her house too. <laughs> like, I mean, she she was like, <laughs> whatever it's going to take for him to go and get off of my couch. Fine. And then I was also triggered because I was like, one of y'all wrote this this into the podcast. This is a read letter. It absolutely is. No. <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, it, ooh, ooh, it definitely could be, though. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yep. It's bad uh, enough. Yeah, fuck. Yikes. Dealing with whatever your mental health issue it is or may be. Like, even right now, I... It's like, I feel like my brain feels like a one of the robots in Five Nights at Freddy's or something. Like, I feel like a short-circuited, like a ride stuck at Six Flags or something. And it it's... 
what can be done. Yeah. So it doesn't help when it feels like people that you are supposed to trust are going. And did you know? Well, I don't know because I'm not going. Just pull me to the side and as clearly and respectfully as you possibly can in the moment, communicate with me. Best for everybody, I promise you. Even if it doesn't work out to be the best case scenario in that moment, I honestly feel like majority of times it will work its way right back around to being for the best. And even if the person gives you two middle fingers and says fuck off and then rides off into the sunset, you did the best thing that you could. To me, you know, I'm not a fucking therapist. Maybe you should go to your wife and tell her to be a liar. But you know, I, I mean, know. no, because at least you were. I mean, because at least then you can say you were honest. Thomas, Thomas had like real issues, like valid concerns. Like you're leaving the door open randomly in the middle of the night, and I have kids. Like that's a real thing. Nobody can fault you for having a concern and saying something about it. But instead, you hid behind your wife and let her take the fall. Like it wasn't your thing like it wasn't I'm not, like it wasn't what yeah. you wanted i'm not so it's just like, to like absolve yeah anything yeah anything no i didn't think so but i'm just like like you said a real con- conversation like an honest forthright conversation because now you throwing velma under the bus and nathan has got to have felt some type of way about you as a cousin because it's like so your wife won't be gone and that's just that and it ain't no conversation about it at all like you don't know what's going on or anything and yeah he has to be accountable for his actions too he does have to still you know keep in mind that other people live here there are safety concerns but like like you said some honesty and willingness to have tough conversations could have avoided that whole mess so, yeah, I hope people learn from that. Yeah, hopefully, but. I mean, you know, niggas. Yeah, so. I'll leave it at Why hopefully. Not? <laughs> Why not just leave it there? Try On a high nice. note. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that wraps up this week's episode of The Read. Make sure you check us out at thisistheread.com and on social media at this is the read. I don't think we have any other announcements for today. You can find our merch at shoptheread.com and, um, as always, I would just say, take care of yourselves, hoes. Yeah. Do your best. It's seasonal depression season. And, you know, it's been helpful for me to make sure I get up first thing in the morning and try to go outside, get some contact with the sun while it's up. And, um, yeah, staying in therapy, journaling, all that shit, because it's wintry out here. So it gets kind of rough. So be good to yourselves. 